You know, I find what not to do videos a lot more interesting than what to do videos. So because of that, we are again talking about things not to do as a runner. Let's get into it. Today I found an article in the New York Times and this article is titled Six Mistakes That New Runners Make. And like all mistakes that we tend to push off on new runners, I think maybe runners like us with maybe a little bit of experience still make those mistakes from time to time. You let me know in the comments if you have made any of these mistakes that we're going to talk about. And of course I'll place a link to that New York Times article in the show notes below in case you want to read it for yourself. Okay, the first thing, the first mistake that new runners make is Pace yourself, don't race yourself, or at least that's the, the title of the paragraph. Pace yourself, don't race yourself. And you know what they're talking about, right? New runners, when they go out, they tend to just run too fast. And that's probably because running fast is fun, right? I mean, no one gets a buzz out of driving really slow or going on a really slow roller coaster. When you're a kid and you go out to run, you just run as fast as you can. And people that haven't run, when they come into it, well, that's what they think they have to do. They, they, have, to, they have to run fast. But it's not just about the actual speed that runners run, right? We know that if we're gonna be sustainable, we have to find a pace that is sustainable. And for a lot of us, that's gonna be conversational pace. So when we're running, we can actually hold a conversation. Not like the conversation that I'm having with you right now. Yes, I know this technically isn't a conversation because when you're running, you are gonna be just slightly out of breath. So it's not gonna be as comfortable as if you're sitting in a chair behind a desk talking to a camera. You might be a little more breathy, but the point is, is that you can still have a conversation. Now, the reason that running is addicting for some of us is that it makes us feel good. And I know, doesn't make us feel good in the moment all the time, although sometimes it does, but it makes us feel good after the fact. And new runners, when they come in, they haven't built up that aerobic resiliency. They haven't built up that skeletal resiliency and they get these good feelings and you know, they finish a run and they think, hey, I feel pretty good. I'm glad I did that. I'm gonna go out again tomorrow. And then that repeats the next day and the next day because they haven't built up that aerobic or skeletal resistance, probably more skeletal than aerobic because our aerobic system really increases in fitness a lot faster than our skeletal system. But anyway, doing too much, too soon is a recipe for disaster and new runners sometimes fall into that. They just want to get that good feeling and they want to repeat that good feeling time and time again. And of course, if you do too much too soon, you're probably going to wind up injured. And of course, that's why a lot of new runners do get injuries. I mean, I'm especially thinking of shin splints. I remember when I was a new runner and I just wanted to run all the time. I mean, not nearly as much as I do right now, but as a new runner, it's a different standard. But you know, going out for a couple miles here, a couple miles there, and whew, I got the worst shin splints. And that is no joke. That is so painful. So if any of your new runners buddies have shin splints just give them some sympathy it's not pleasant now the good thing is is that shin splints generally don't happen to runners once they've been running for a while but they can we can't rule it out but generally it happens to newer runners more often than runners that have been running for a while so all that to say if you're a new runner just take it easy don't go too fast don't do too much ease into it the next thing that new runners do is to kind of have that all or nothing approach and we already talked about it with the number of times they're going to run like they get that good feeling they want to keep repeating it but the second mistake that new runners make is not setting a goal that actually fits their life style. But look, when you're starting out, and of course when you've been established for a long time, the same thing holds true, but when you're starting out, you have to think about a training program that's actually going to fit with the rest of your life. Like you do, you probably have other responsibilities. You might have family, you might have a job, and I always joke about my job getting in the way of my running, but with a family that's really not a good excuse. So if you do have other responsibilities, figure out a way how to work your running into your life. Don't fit your life around your running, though I know a lot of runners do that. And if you do fit your running into your life appropriately, you're going to be much happier and you're going to be much more likely to to continue. So perhaps if you're starting out, you could start with something like I'm going to run for 30 minutes twice a week and I'm going to fit that in on X day and Y day, right? And once you do that for a couple of weeks, you're going to start figuring out that it's sustainable, that you can maybe squeeze in another day and then go from there. Like it will snowball pretty quickly. But what you don't want to do is just start running and then think all of a sudden, you know what? I want to train for a marathon and then jump right into full on marathon training and get your butt kicked and be so worn out and so anxious from that training that you don't want to continue anymore. And the horrible thing is is that if you're a new runner and you're looking for a little confirmation that such a thing is sustainable like couch to marathon you are going to find people on the internet that have done that but it's not ideal just know that and look let me be clear a race is not the end goal a race of any distance is not the end goal if you were just running for fitness then just going out for those 30 minute runs a couple days a week are going to help you achieve that goal i guess ultimately and the article states it best try not to get caught up in other people's training goals while you're setting your own and look this is easier said than done because obviously once you start running you may interact with other runners and once you start interacting with other runners, you're going to hear about things that you may think would suit you. So let's say you're doing those two 30 minute runs a week and all of a sudden someone starts talking about the Marathon de Sables in Morocco. And you think, yeah, I could do that. Anyway, I've already said it. The point is, is that it escalates very quickly. Just 
try and stay in control of it. Now, the third mistake that new runners make, and I would bet a lot of you make, and I only bet a lot of you make it because I make this mistake on a daily basis, is not fueling before and after your runs. And look, here's the thing. I think this is a lot easier said than done. Well, it's not necessarily a lot easier said than done, but if you are like me and you wake up early and you don't feel hungry at that time in the morning, it seems very natural to just go out for your run without eating. But the point is, is that you will probably run better and you'll feel better on your run if you do have a little something before you go out for that run. And the same thing is true after your run. You know, there are times that I come back from a run and I get in the shower and then I immediately fall into some other task and I don't eat for a couple hours. In fact, that's probably the norm. Well, I am doing myself and my training a disservice by training that way, by not eating before and definitely by not eating after. Now, Megan Featherston, you know her from Believe in the Run, she's actually quoted in this article and she says that not eating before your morning run can increase your chance of injury and negatively impact your hormones and your metabolism. And she says the key is eating simple carbohydrates. So the suggestion in the article is a couple of graham crackers, a packet of applesauce, a banana, or a slice of bread. They're all good options. And of course, people like me that don't like eating before they go out for a morning run, we're not abnormal. There's a lot of us out there. And Megan has a very simple answer for us, and that is to practice. The more you practice, the more you'll get used to just eating a little something before your runs. She even suggests starting with one graham cracker and kind of moving up from there. And then when you finish your run, you're going to want to focus on protein heavy foods. And that should be taken in within an hour of finishing your workout. Now, yes, I know, protein heavy foods. I think for me at least, I have to work on the simple act of just eating anything when I'm finishing a run rather than focusing on a protein heavy food. I guess I could have a protein shake, but then I'd have to make the protein shake, mix it. It just seems like a lot of work. But if I want to improve and I want to actually get the most out of my training, I get it. It's probably something I need to look into. Now, I know the article is six mistakes that new runners make, but the next one doesn't really make sense as a mistake, but it's more like a recommendation in order to make running a little easier, and that is to find a running crew or consider hiring a coach. And look, I get it. I think finding a running crew, especially when you're new, can be very rewarding. Rewarding in the way that misery loves company. Like, it's not always easy getting up and going for those morning runs. And then you make good running friends, and if you both start to like it at the same time, then you have something to bond over. Like, it's fun. It's fun running with other people. Now, as far as a running coach goes, again, it depends what your goals are. And I think by having this recommendation in the article, it's kind of skewing the advice in the way of getting a coach. And we've got to remember, one of those recommendations before was to like train at your own level, like train around your life. And if you hire a running coach and you're getting given a set plan, that may interfere with your life. And I think me personally, I have a good reason why I don't want to hire a coach. And that's because it wouldn't fit in with my life. Like, I think I could probably be a better runner if I did hire a running coach, but also... I don't want to be told what to do. You know what I mean? I don't mean that in like a, I'm a rebel and you're not going to tell me what to do type of way. It's more like when I want to go out for a run, that's that's what I want to do. I want to go out for a run. I like doing it most days of the week. Like I don't want to have that structure all the time. Even though when I am training for a marathon, I do tend to follow a training plan very loosely. Anyway, of course, the article tells you that you have to research your coaches to make sure they've got experience, all kinds of certifications, you know, all the things that you would look for when you're trying to hire a professional. And it does say that finding a running coach by social media could be a bit tricky. I mean, in case you didn't know, people don't always tell the truth online, but I'm glad they put that into the article. The next mistake that new runners tend to make, and by new runners, I mean all runners, is when they kind of let their gear run away with them. And look, there's a very easy trap to fall into, especially if you like watching shoe review videos or running gear review videos. It's very easy to find stuff that looks good and you think will work for you. Well, in the beginning, and for most of us, it's best to keep our gear simple. And look, it's very easy to buy very expensive running gear. I mean, it's easier to buy expensive running gear than it is inexpensive running gear. It's easy easy to want to update to the latest GPS watch and it's really easy to want to fall into that running shoe trap where you just need more and more running shoes. Trust me, I know, I'm there. But especially if you're a beginner, just buy an inexpensive pair of running shoes that are a year old. By buying last year's model, you're going to save a boatload of money. And in the beginning, you don't need several pairs of running shoes. Yes, it's true that if you have a couple pairs of running shoes, it's going to make the overall life of all the shoes last longer. But don't let that be a barrier to get started. Now, you can always come to me when you're ready to buy your second pair of running shoes, and I will give you my thoughts on the topic of running shoes. But until then, relax. Just buy a nice, somewhat inexpensive pair and start running. I don't even think it's necessary to get started with a watch. And just like running shoes, if you buy last year's model or if you buy a used running watch, you will save a boatload of money and you'll get most of the features that are on the newest watches. There are a lot of runners out there that get a new running watch every year. And where does that old running watch go? Well, it goes on eBay, it goes on Facebook Marketplace, and you can find a good deal when you're ready to buy one. And the sixth mistake or recommendation for new runners, assuming that they don't do this, is to master the art of resting. And this is something that has taken me a long time to actually get used to and actually do. 
because in the beginning, I did not want to rest at all. I wanted to train, 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 and I was repeatedly getting injured. And that is no fun because when you're injured, you're not doing any training. So we all know this by now, you have to rest in order to let your body recover so you can hit it hard again. Resting is just as much part of the training equation as the actual training is. Except that sometimes it's good to not run. And by not running, you're actually getting stronger for your next run. It's a little counterintuitive. Okay, so now I want to hear from you. Now, I already asked the question in the beginning of the video, but I do want to know if you have made any of those mistakes that were listed in this video. And if you made other mistakes as a new runner, or if you are still making those mistakes as a seasoned runner, I want to hear about them. Drop a comment and let me know. Now, guys, if you have made it till this point in the video, here's the thing. I want you to drop the stack of pancakes emoji in the comments, just so I know that you made it till this point in the video. And why pancakes? Well, that's because I was just thinking about what I'm going to have for breakfast tomorrow, and I'm going to have pancakes. So with that, it's Matt B. This has been a video on mistakes that new runners and seasoned runners make. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.